Mr. Men Go Camping by Roger Hargreaves Mr. Strong was very pleased when he looked out of his window and there was not a cloud in sight. Good, said Mr. Strong. And why was it good? It was good because Mr. Strong was taking all his friends camping in the woods and there is nothing more likely to ruin a camping trip than rain. Although an overflowing rucksack is also not good. What have you got in there? exclaimed Mr. Strong in disbelief. Oh, just a few necessities, said Little Miss Splendid. It turned out that those few necessities included half a dozen hats, seven pairs of shoes and four pillows. Mr. Strong repacked the rucksack. Pah! I don't know why you asked her along, grumbled Mr. Grumble as they set off along the path. The day was hot, and it was not long before Mr. Grumble started to grumble about how heavy his rucksack was and that he must be carrying more than his fair share. So Mr. Strong, being the good fellow he was, offered to carry Mr. Grumble's rucksack. By the time they stopped for lunch, he was carrying everyone's rucksacks. The path took them deep into the woods. Not long till we reached the campsite, called Mr. Strong from the rear. However, up front, little Mr. Jelly had a problem. The bridge across the river had been washed away. Oh, help, shrieked Mr. Jelly. We can't cross, and we won't be able to get to the campsite, and we will be lost in the woods in the dark, and then we will fall down a hole, and nobody will ever find us. Calm down, Mr. Jelly, said Mr. Strong, uprooting an enormous tree and laying it across the river. It was safe to cross, but Mr. Jelly was too terrified to step onto the tree, so Mr. Strong put him under his hat and carried him across. Finally, they reached the campsite. The sound of Mr. Bump putting up his tent rang through the forest. Bang! Ouch! Bang! Ouch! Bang! Ouch! As Mr. Bump hit his thumb each time he hammered in a tent peg. There was quite an assortment of tents, but of course the very largest belonged to Little Miss Splendid. It was enormous and looked more like a small circus tent. How ridiculous, grumbled Mr. Grumble, shaking his head. Mr. Forgetful's tent was neatly packed away in the cupboard under his stairs back at home. But Mr. Forgetful did not get cold because they built a big campfire and roasted marshmallows and sang songs round the fire. After his strenuous day, Mr. Strong slept very well in his cosy tent, unlike Mr. Jelly, who spent a very nervous night in his tent he thought the owl hooting was a ghost, and the scurrying mouse was a snake, and Mr. Strong snoring was a prowling bear. It was a very long night. And Mr. Jelly was extremely glad when the sun came up. He peeked cautiously through his tent flap. But to his utter horror, there was indeed a bear in the camp. Oh, help, he whispered very quietly, just in case the bear heard him. What the bear did hear was a very loud voice. What do you think you're doing? yelled Little Miss Bossy. The bear glowered at Little Miss Bossy, and Little Miss Bossy glowered back. Roar! roared the bear, and Little Miss Bossy roared back. Get out of my camp! This was all too upsetting for the bear, and it ran off into the woods. As they had breakfast, Mr. Strong looked up at the sky and noticed some large black clouds, and by the time they had packed up the camp, the first drops of rain began to fall. Oh dear, said Mr. Strong. Oh help, shrieked Mr. Jelly. There's going to be a storm and there will be floods and we will all get washed away and we'll be struck by lightning. Calm down, said Mr. Strong, who had just had an idea. Mr. Strong unpacked Little Miss Splendid's tent and then snapped a long, straight branch off a tree and made an umbrella for all of them to shelter under as they walked back. 
the biggest umbrella in the world. Even Mr Grumble had to admit it was fortunate that little Miss Splendid had come on the camping trip. Everyone agreed that, despite the heavy rucksacks, and the grumbling, and the washed out bridge, and Mr Bump's thumb, and the forgotten tent, and the bear, and the rain, and Mr Jelly's panic, it had been a good trip. That evening, Mr Strong settled back in his armchair and stretched out his tired arms and legs. Maybe next year, he said to himself, I'll go camping on my own.